Hey guys, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. This is a what if series and I'll be continuing more down the road. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and giving me your support up until now. I appreciate it and love the love, but this is like an advertisement video. And if you don't want to hear the advertisement, you can click ahead. But for those of you who wants to hear the advertisement, I have some things I would like to say and a special thank you for all the people that are subscribing to the channel. So if you sit through this, good luck for you because this is how I can tell you guys how to suggest me videos, how to become a patron. You can become a patron for the channel for a $5 tier, a $10 tier, and a $25 tier. And there are specific benefits for those kind of tiers that you will get when you do become a patron for the channel. And I'm not gonna hold you guys up anymore. The link is in the description. So if you wanna support the channel, suggest me videos, do live talks about how it's gonna come and everything, click the link become a patron and you will get notified and everything for those of you who joins the $25 tier you get a special offer you will see it I'm not gonna tell you about it you'll see it when you get over there but anyway let's get back to it what if Deku mastered one for all past 1 million percent part two let's get into the video so as the UA entrance exam ends. You all know that all the students got accepted to the class. Deku gets accepted through uh, via email and a video. And he goes to the beach telling All Might he got accepted and everything. All Might congratulates Deku and was very shocked at how much power and output Deku put into the UA exam and the results he got. Deku got some amazing results. I mean, he was, he hit the zero pointer robot, but he scored just one point over Bakugo, Kachi, Katsuki Bakugo. And he was surprised that Bakugo was even, even gotten that far. I guess he was doing some serious training Izuku thought in his head. So as that's all over, the UA, like a quirk appreciation test starts for Shoto Aizawa. So as Deku's walking to his class, he hopes that the glasses dude is not in there and Kachiski Bakugo is not in there. When he gets there, he's let down because his hopes leaves his like world and everything because they're both in there and Ido gets up and goes to Deku and he, he introduces himself and says that you did a good job in the UA Sports Festival. I'm quite shocked at how well you did. I didn't even think you were gonna do much, let alone do that and you you amazed a lot of people i didn't think much of you when i first saw you but i hope to be a good friend of yours my name's tinya Ida, and he says hi mizuku midoriya it's nice to meet you Ida." and as he sees you me about god but bakugo he just turns his head and says <laughs> deku why are you in here and so even ochaku she walks in and she thinks in her head, I'm glad he's here. It, it just makes her feel warm inside that Deku's in the class. Like the guy who saved her is in the class with her. And Shoto Aizawa shows up at the door. Like he shows up at the door, creepy as hell. He's like, they thought he was a caterpillar, but he wasn't. He was just in his sleeping bag. And he gets up and says, all of you put on your PE clothes. We're going out to the training field. And all the students just like are shocked, like already? So all of them put on their like PE clothes and they go out to the training field and and they were going to throw the ball and it's a ball appreciation test and Shoto Aizawa said, Izuku Midoriya, you're up first. Let's see what you got, kid. So Izuku Midoriya comes up first. He gets up and he gets the ball, but he he's just implementing like how much power. See, in the first one, Izuku just focused on using the power of one for all in his fingers so he can further prove Aizawa wrong because Aizawa stopped him from using the quirk so so it wouldn't break his body but in this series Izuku has no backlash because he's already trained up for that he's already has the skills for that kind of explosion but see this is Izuku Izuku is like confident so he wants to use more power than he did hitting the robot and Izuku thought to himself you know what, what if I use 200% of my power? Like, what if I increased, like, what if I increased the maximum output of my power to 200%? I know I can go beyond, 
I just know it. I know this power limit, this like this power in me doesn't just reach 100%. It has to go beyond that. I know I can push it past that. I just want experience, just want, just to know if I can. So what Izuku does is he in, tried to increase his full output of one for all to 200%, but and was about to get ready to throw the ball, and he just scored like basically 13 feet. I like 13 feet. It list, the ball just landed in front of Izuku, and Izuku's like, "What? I was gonna go way further than that." And he looks at Shoto Aizawa, and Shoto Aizawa just wraps his things around Izuku. And Izuku was just like intimidated because he didn't know Shoto Aizawa was this strong. He didn't realize in the book that it was Eraserhead. And Eraserhead erased his quirk. So that's how Izuku, knowing about him, he started reminiscing his head. This is a hero of Eraserhead. No wonder my quirk got erased. Right, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So we got. So. Shoto Aizawa didn't tell Izuku, were you planning on destroying your body? You were going overboard there. If you would have done that, then your quirk would be just basically useless. And then Shoto Aizawa says, I got serious with the class. After Bakugo got through his ball, everyone thought the ball thing was just like a joke or anything. And, ba and Shoto Aizawa, after he turned Izuku's quirk off, he says, this is not a game. Yo, you are doing a test. Any one of you who scores below zero, I will expel you. And I'm dead serious. For I fixed, I expelled a whole class before. And all the kids were scared. They were shocked. They, didn't, they did not want to hear that kind of news from this guy. Because they, they thought they, the look he gave them was serious. So Aizawa said, I'm going to give you a second chance. Prove me that your quirk isn't worthless after all. And Izuku said, just got sat down and said, well, I was being a little cocky. I thought I could just increase my maximum output to 200%, but since you just did that, I, I don't feel like you did, uh, you had a need to do that because I want to see just how further I can push my power. I wouldn't have suffered more than just a strain. But if you say so, because you are the teacher. And Izuku just said one for all. 50% and powered up to 50% full cow and increased the energy in his hand and he threw the one for all he threw the ball he didn't throw one for all he threw the ball and he threw it so far so in the anime it reached 705.3 so in this series it reached at a strongly 1000 and 6.7 and everyone in the class was shocked and Bakugo was just getting angry he was just furious like he never knew that Izuku had a quirk for all he knew that Izuku didn't have a quirk he was just a quirkless loser that's it that's all to it that's all Bakugo was thinking in his hand he just kept reminiscing about Izuku have not having a quirk and now he just comes out of the blue and has a quirk he Bakugo just felt like he'd been lied to all this time. So he seen that and he said, Izuku had a quirk. And like he started thinking Izuku was just thinking low of me. Like he wasn't really like, but Bakugo just started getting angrier and angrier. And Shoto Aizawa says, this kid, you really are something. I wonder just how far that ball would have went if you would have used 200% of your power. This is interesting. And Deku turns to Shoto Aizawa and says, yeah, I know, it's, I could have thrown it pretty further than that, but oh well. And he just walks off. And Bakugo just instantly angry. He runs at Izuku saying, Izuku, show me, show me how you did that or I'll kill you. And Izuku just gets into a fighting stance. He just gets into a fighting stance. He didn't get scared or nothing like that. He gets into a fighting stance. Oh, Bakugo, you want to spar with me? Well, let's go at it. And Shoto Aizawa stops Bakugo from doing anything he did and Bakugo just says why are your thing so strong and Izuku says yeah that's some pretty strong cloth you got there erase your head and Izuku says uh yeah how do you never mind I don't want to get into that conversation anyway the tests are over go back to class get out your PE clothes so as that ends we go into now we're going into because say that's arc is over now we're going into the USJ battle trial arc and as the teams are split up into two, 
Deku and Ochaku versus Tinya and Katsuki Bakugo. So as they're doing the trials and everything, they pick out their hero costumes and Deku chooses the name, I guess, of some interaction with what Ochaku told how she liked the name and the meaning that it output. Deku thought, I mean, Izuku thought it was a name that Kachan gave to him to make fun of him, which he did, but he chose it to be a hero. So, as Kachan, he didn't wait around. He wasn't waiting around for this. So, Kachan just instantly blasts off. And Tinya Ida was like, like, we need to make a plan. Like, what are you doing? Like, he just blasts off because he said, I'm going to find Deku. I'm going to find that Quirkless loser and just get to the bottom of this. I need to get to the bottom of this. And Kachan just blasts off. As Deku and Ochaku, they're walking through the hallways. And they're trying to say, like, think of a plan to get to the missile before it's, like, time over, before it's game over. And Bakugo, he comes out of nowhere and just flanks Izuku and Ochaku. But Izuku was fast. He pushes Ochaku out the way. He takes the explosion head on. And ah, that hurts. And he hits Kachan in the face with a big Detroit smash, sending Kachan flying back the way he came. Now, he didn't hit him too hard. But he flew back and caught Chunk. Like, Bakugo, he caught himself. He caught himself and said, Ugh. And he te- and Deku just goes to Ochako and he tells her, Just go, I got this. I'll take on Bakugo. You just get out of here and go to the missile and try to disarm it or capture it. As that's what Ochako did. So she ran upstairs to go to Tinya Ida. And you know, Tinya Ida has his little weird interpretation of being a, becoming a villain or something like that sorry i stuttered there becoming a villain or something like that and she giggles and he finds out her location and she says crap while deku and bakugo they're they're fighting they're clashing izuku is hitting deku and i mean izuku is hitting baku in the face bakugo in the face and bakugo is answering back with punches and attacks and izuku is answering back kneeing him and kicking him back off of him and everything they're falling and everything as they're getting tired they're using a lot of energy and izuku's like shock he's saying bakugo you're you're able to keep up with me that's Im- impressive you must have been doing some impressive training too and ibaku smiles he's like he smiles now he's starting to warm up to izuku but he smiles out of confidence as i would say the same about you i, mean, I think you lied to me deku where did you get that kind of power, you bastard? And Deku says, I'll tell you if you can give me a good or battle. If you can give me a big conclusion. And as their battle was coming to a conclusion, you see Deku, he, he throws a Delaware Detroit smash, hitting Bakugo so hard and thinking Bakugo wouldn't get back up off that attack. He says, hey, you did well, but this is your limit, I guess. And Bakugo gets back up and hits Deku so hard in the face, like in the like jaw. Like he right hooks him to the jaw and Deku instantly almost blacks out, but he catches himself. And Bakugo just says, you loser, why won't you just stay down? And Deku says, I can't stay down. I have a job to do. And once I complete that job, then only then will I give in. As he said, Rakugo says, we need this battle to come to a conclusion. And he says, I will not lose by you. And he just dashes towards Izuku. And Izuku does the same. He wasn't a, like, he's already weak and he can't use much of his power right now. Both of them can't. So they just use him one final resort, one final attack. And Izuku yells Detroit smash and Bakugo just fires up an explosion and sends it his way while Izuku he takes the explosion head on and uses the Detroit smash to smash up the floor for a ch- for a distraction for Ida so all the rubble was in the way and Ochaku used that to advantage so he grabbed one of the pillars making the pillars basically weightless and hits the rocket Ida while he's distracted by that she flies over Ida's head and grabs the bomb and they win and Deku says, you know, you can also be very strong. But I outsmarted you, Kachan. And he blacks out. And Bakugo, he's he's just angry at this. Seeing that Deku of all people 
beat him at something that was so easy. He lost and Bakugo was just angry. So the battle trial was over. All the other students like Todoroki, all the other students like them, they won the battle trial too. So after that, All Might comes up and he congratulates the students. Wow, the doctors take Izuku away and to, to get healed and all that. And Wakugo, he's just, he's just shocked. He just believe what just happened right now. He really doesn't believe what just happened right now. So as Izuku's getting carried away, he gets healed up by Recovery Girl. And he's, like, the class is over there going home. They're going back to their houses and everything. He sees Bakugo walking and he tells Bakugo, I didn't lie to you. I didn't, I'd never had a quirk. This quirk is, was given to me. And I'm, I will use this power power and I will master it and I will defeat you for real. Like, he just points to him, like, because that the injury that Bakugo had, it was a full power blast, and it really damaged them, and both of them were damaged. As Bakugo, he didn't, he went to the recovery girl, too, because he suffered some real damages, too, but he was just, like, he was just standing. When he was just standing there, he was shocked, so he couldn't move or let alone do anything, and when he did, he went to the recovery girl, so with that being said. So as Deku's just telling Bakugo, I will master this borrowed power and become number one. And I will use it to defeat everyone in front of me. And Bakugo says, not if I have anything to say about it, you won't. I will be number one before a quirkless idiot like you could ever be number one. And he just walks off, just sad. And All Might confronts him saying, there are better days. And yes, Izuku has that kind of skill. But you have the skill, Bakugo. You have the skill, young Bakugo, to become number one if you want you just have to be a rival you have to want it you have to have results and here's my lesson to you in this one all might wasn't as like friendly he was friendly but he wasn't as friendly like that he would always give people tough love and tough advice not to an extent that it hurt their feelings but to an extent like when he see a person, if he sees a person that's fragile, he would cheer them up. All Might was a symbol of peace in this series still, but he always judged a person by the way they carried themselves. So he talked to Bakugo the way Bakugo carried himself, and he says, Bakugo, you need to stop being weak. You don't cry. You see that your adversary is stronger than you. What do you do in that much? And Bakugo tries to talk back, and All Might just looks at, glares at him. He just, uh, like he stops talking. And... All Might says, what do you do in that point? And Bakugo, this is at the point where Deku, like, Deku's gone. Like, Bakugo was walking off. This is when Bakugo was, ran into All Might and when he was leaving school. So, this was at the end of the battle trial arc. So, ba- I, like, All Might just asks him and he, Bakugo says, what, what do I do when my adversary is stronger than me i train to get stronger so i can be the number one then do that instead of moping instead of pouting saying you will become this that is nothing but wasted energy you could use to be training so don't let it get you down the only thing you can aim for is to get stronger so that it will never happen again because young midoriya is doing the same and you had better get up and do it again like, you have better do something about it. Because if you don't, he's going to leave you in the dust. And he's already aiming to further his power to a new level. So you should do the same, young Bakugo. As the Bakugo says, yes, sir. And he walks off. In this series, Bakugo is not as much of a hothead, but he takes advice when it's needed. So he's not that much of a hothead. So as the Bakugo walks off and everything... He says to himself, I will become stronger. I promise I will become stronger. And I will beat you, Deku. And that's the end of the battle trial arc. Next is the USJ arc where everyone's in their hero costume. They get sent to this facility. I go into this facility to get sent to there to do their own training. And of course, Deku had to wear his normal clothes because he didn't have... I guess he didn't have like his uh 
costume because it was badly damaged by Bakugo's explosions and everything. And Bakugo didn't have his costume because his was badly damaged by Izuku Midori. Even his gauntlets that he had, Izuku destroyed those off the ripper because he said, you know, those kind of a problem. Those help you aim your power. But Bakugo already mastered that without those gauntlets. So, in a literal sense, he just used it to be flashy. That's it. So that's where we're going to end things now. The next arc and the next arcs we're going to cover is the USJ arc, the battle arc. And that arc, you're going to see Deku do some amazing things in that arc. Like the Nomu, um, you're going to see a bunch of things get played very differently. Even with Bakugo there, you're going to see things get played very differently with these two there. And it's going to be very interesting for these two because now that see what happens is the villains they come into the picture in this arc and now that the villains are there all these kids are just like they're scared and all the things that happened to Shoto Aizawa in the original canon you're gonna see that get played out very differently in this series so without being further said thank you for watching the video like comment subscribe and also at the end this is the end of the video become a patron you can suggest big videos and you get awesome benefits i hope to see you in the next video you guys have a good morning or a good night and thanks for watching much appreciated